Hello, everybody. Our friend Emily Jasinski. She stuck around in order to talk a little bit about media criticism. Media criticism. That's something that she does over at the got Federalist. Some, got some good ones this week. Yeah, Every week got some, some rich some good ones. material. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So Emily sent over a few of her stories. This is something that I really loved, which is that the first one was that CNN, we have the graphic we can throw up on the screen, is that CNN cut four, 540 words <laughs> out of the Trump transcript of the phone call in order to make it seem as if he says, I, ha I need a favor from you, and then directly launches into right. the Talking Hunter Biden, Biden stuff. I mean, I, that's probably one of the most egregious ones. And and look, I mean, Crystal, you, you talked about this. It's it's bad, like what Trump did. It's obviously terrible. But and Emily, they don't they didn't need to stitch the transcript this <laughs> no, way right. in order to make it look to bad. To make it look like, bad, like we bad. can all see what's going you can on. Put the words right. on the screen. The other thing is, it's simple. This is yeah. needlessly dishonest. Yeah. And right. so oftentimes the media is dishonest and it's unintentional, or they're right. doing it very specifically to report yeah. a narrative. This is completely completely needless because mm -hmm. there is stuff in this phone call that's worth their front page headline. Yeah. It might not be as juicy as saying that Trump or as yeah. implying that Trump explicitly asked for a favor on the mm -hmm. Biden stuff, but the media actually, it wasn't just CNN, this happened in other outlets this week, where they actually just would Im omit all of those words, which was hundreds of words yeah. in between when Donald Trump said he needed a favor, right. and by the time he talked about Joe Biden, because when the context of him saying a favor was about CrowdStrike, yeah. which right. is an entirely different issue. Different yeah. rabbit hole also of internet conspiracy. Yeah. Also, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> listen. When, when you were reading it, I was like, Sagar, you're going to have to explain this. I was like, like oh, let me put this, this hat back on. It's been, I had to dig in. I was like, it's been a while. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in fairness, which I don't always yeah. give up, but yeah. in fairness, the way Trump talks, yeah, when hard, you, I mean, hard. seriously, when you read yeah. through the transcript, <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, Sagar, do you think that this Ukrainian president even knew what the hell he was yeah, talking? Like, I mean, no, so, I mean, yeah. like, confused, and he goes over here, crowd strike, and then he's back here, and then let me tell you about the movie. <laughs> They're like, what, what are we even talking about anymore? Right. So in, in fairness to these outlets like it is so confused that I think maybe they were just trying to put the pieces together I, in I some don't, kind of way that made sense. I don't think so. Because it's trying like, to cut him some slack here. here. I, like, I just can't imagine why they, and this is like major outlets, so yeah. this is like legacy yeah. outlets. Yeah. I can't imagine, I can't imagine you know, how this It's passed. funny too because it's been this breathless, like it's like they have to stitch the narrative together perfectly. They can't yep. admit anything contra. I've noticed the same thing. I, I watched Nicole Wallace break into her live MSNBC coverage while Trump was talking about a uh, Hunter Biden. And she goes, just so ever all our viewers are clear, yeah. this is a lie. Yeah. This is awesome. And I was like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Day First time. of all, Day no. Time. You know, there's a lot that goes on. You know, none of this is disproven. It's absolutely corrupt to sit on the, on the board of a foreign energy company. But, like, breaking into live coverage, doing this, like, live mm -hmm. fact-checking that CNN does this with their chirons, it's just something that I really... I well, don't understand the, this the impetus. Biden stuff yeah. in particular, the media has wanted to dismiss all of it yeah. as conspiracy theory. Right. Which is and ridiculous. Look, and yeah. look, Trump goes way out on a limb, and Julia, I mean, there, yes, somebody yes. brought up Soros on Fox News. <laughs> like, there's crazy yep. stuff there yep. that is not that is not true or not proven. But there is a factual matter yep. that he sat on the board yes. of this Ukrainian energy company and earned $50,000 while his dad was vice president. And the, that is a fact, and that is reality. Yes, and some of the best reporting on this has come from the mainstream media. And yes, so the mainstream from the New York Times. That's true. Yeah, and yeah. so, but when it's Trump versus Biden, and when it's when that's the matchup, mm -hmm. the media will take Biden's side, even though they generally don't like Biden. But when yeah. he's pitted up against Donald Trump, that's right. when he's going to get friendlier coverage, and it's all going to be conspiracy mongering. That, really, I think that's really, really well said. So yeah. the New York Times also uh, <laughs> caught our attention this week. This is hilarious. Yes, so they wrote story. this front yeah. page story about how voters, how right. swing voters, that was the premise, <laughs> right. were reacting to impeachment, and the six swing quote unquote voters that were supposedly repelled by impeachment. One was a woman who had been to 23 Trump rallies and wrote a book on Trump, okay? Book, yeah. Another is a consistent Republican voter. And here's the other thing. Several of these voters, they have interviewed multiple times God. under the same premise that they're swing voters. I mean, it just looks... First of all, it's very misleading. It's also incredibly yeah. lazy. Yeah, no, it's both of those things, and it's and it's actually one thing to say we're checking the temp we're taking the temperature of yeah. people that we've talked to before. Yeah, and there may be some value in that, but to right. present these as like average Trump voters, like oh, we just went to a local PTA meeting and pulled the 23-time Trump rally attendee yeah. who wrote a book, <laughs> wrote a book about him. <laughs> right, like, it, and it, they didn't disclose that they'd interviewed them before because right. I could see the merit in that, like have their opinions changed yeah. over time. Absolutely. Okay, fine, yeah. but that's not I what they see, were doing. And here. it's just this odd impulse that they have. They're like, let's put on our 
Myanmar safari jacket and oh, boots and so plopped true. down so into Ohio. But yeah. listen, this so is true. what, this was, yeah. was it the day after the election? It was yeah. in the days after the election that yeah. Dean Bacay came out and said in 2016, we need to do a better job of understanding America. We don't get religion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And here we are, it's 2019, and they're pulling this nonsense. How does this pass the editorial side? I have no idea how yeah. editors don't catch well, this. Well, that's, that's right. a real question, is how does this get through? I mean, I kind of hate these pieces anyway, where you find four people yeah. that are going to say, like, whatever you've decided your narrative is. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, I get it. You want to get react from regular people, but it's kind of hard to say what it all amounts mm -hmm. to when it's such a small sliver and you don't have any other polling data or anything to back it up. I just always feel like these pieces are a little suspect to start with. Yeah. They are, and the media needs to figure out a better way to cover what people are actually thinking because this is not it. And I mean, this is one <laughs> this is of the it. many issues with yeah. the New York Times right now is that they just have no idea how to cover the rest of the country. And granted, it's hard. This is a massive country. Right. They are in Manhattan and D.C. How do you do it? I don't know, but this is well, not This is, this this is, is not where the, the demise of local it. news really is. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. This is where they actually could do well. Well, and maybe they could hire some people who are from yeah, right. Boston, yeah. New York, D.C., who may yes. have some understanding of other backgrounds, yeah. classes, and parts of the country. But that's they the would get—they would go through their tweets and they would be fired. With that's right. Hours. That's right. So yeah. sorry. That's how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> In other words, Thanks we're all doomed. Yeah. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Thanks, Thanks for sticking around. One more rising after this.